First up, we have Star Pharma Holdings Limited, ASX code SPL, with a market cap of 60 million. We welcome Dr. Jackie Fairley, the CEO of Star Pharma. Star Pharma is a world leader in the development of Dendroma products for pharmaceutical, life science, and other applications. Dr. Fairley, take it away. Thank you very much, Adrian. If I could have the first slide, please, uh, and advance one more, two more, I think, and then we'll get into. Thank you. Well, what I'd like to do is to provide a very quick um, overview of Star Pharma. Uh, Star Pharma is a um, a company in the pharmaceutical space that's built on a platform technology. The platform technology originally came out of CSIRO and it's a highly branched form of polymer called a dendroma. We have a number of marketed products, uh, which you can see on the screen on the right hand side there, uh, as well as a number of high value oncology assets. We have multiple uh, partnerships with global pharmaceutical companies and a strong financial position and share register. If you can advance, please. Our pipeline uh, that's been developed using this technology includes three oncology products, Depcarbazitaxel, Depirinotec, and Depdocetaxel, which are all wholly owned by Star Pharma. These are improved versions of existing cancer drugs, reducing the side effects and improving the efficacy. We also have a preclinical pipeline that you can see in the bottom left-hand side of the slide, marketed products in the top right of that slide, three marketed products, including the highly novel antiviral nasal spray Viralese. Uh, and in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see um, uh, details of our pharmaceutical partnerships. So we have um, a deep portfolio of pharmaceutical partnerships, which is uh, expanding, uh, and uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about those as we go through the presentation. Next slide, please. Um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about a couple of our oncology products in a moment, but first of all, I wanted to just um, provide a bit of background on our platform and how we use this in drug delivery. In drug delivery, we're using this highly branched polymer or dendroma to um, <clears throat> to act as a scaffold to which we attach other drugs. We can either attach standard pharmaceuticals, radio pharmaceuticals, which is a very hot area right now uh, in oncology therapy in particular. Um, we can attach antibodies. So we can attach a wide range of things to this scaffold. And what that allows us to do is to improve the safety of these products, to reduce side effects, to improve their performance, to generate new intellectual property or patent life, and in oncology, importantly, to target tumours. So we get 40 to 70 times more drug in a tumour when delivered using our dendroma technology than you would alone. We also have the ability to modify how long drugs last and where they distribute. So this is a very valuable platform technology, uh, and it does allow us to take a generic drug and create a proprietary version of it, which we can then patent and own outright. And I'll show you a couple of examples of those in a moment. But first of all, I wanted to very briefly, if you could just advance the slide, um, just very briefly talk about our partnered programs. So we have a number of partnerships. So three of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies in the world, Merck, Genentech, AstraZeneca, and a Chinese company, Chase Sun, all of whom who have come to us and said, we'd like to access your technology to improve the performance of a particular product that they're looking to develop. Um, these arrangements uh, have both a research phase and in the commercial phase are associated with downstream payments, be they in the form of milestones or royalties, and they are funded by our partners. So these are these partnerships offer a significant amount of leverage. We get a free carried interest and they create, create significant optionality. Next slide, please. Um, I'd like to now talk about two of our, um, in the time available, I won't have time to go through all of it, but two of our um, internal oncology products uh, and the first of those is a product called Depirinotecan. Uh, this is currently in uh, phase two trial. It's been, uh, we've actually completed recruitment in one arm of the trial and the other one is nearing completion. This is actually a dendroma improved version of a widely used cancer drug called Camptostar, um, which is um, used particularly in colorectal cancer. And we, ver and we recently released um, data from this just a last, in the last couple of weeks. 
if you could advance the slide. Um, very briefly, the results of, um, of that study show that um, there are two cohorts of patients, colorectal cancer patients, and I'll show you some ovarian cancer patients in a moment. These were very heavily pretreated patients. So they had received on average four prior therapy regimens prior to um, coming into the study, an average of around 31 cycles of treatment. 97% of them had already been treated with the dendroma, with the non-dendroma version, the conventional version of this drug, which is made by Pfizer. Um, and despite this heavy pretreatment, we saw durable efficacy responses up to 72 weeks and a disease control rate of 48% in evaluable patients. Importantly, we also saw no severe diarrhea or cholinergic syndrome, so significantly fewer side effects. We had very favorable feedback from patients and clinicians uh, in this study, um, and they were comparing it directly with the standard form of this therapy. Um, and so what we've done here is we've created a patented version of an existing cancer drug, which has got fewer side effects and is showing some really interesting efficacy. Uh, we also trialed in colorectal cancer in combination with a drug called 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU, and you can see the results of that on the right-hand side of this slide. So a disease control rate in the combination arm of this study of 100%, uh, and we again saw significantly better side effect uh, profile. We, next slide, please. We also trialed the product uh, in a cohort of patients who had advanced ovarian cancer. And <clears throat> both ovarian cancer and colorectal cancer are both very problematic cancers in that the available therapies are quite limited. In the case of colorectal cancer, as I was mentioning earlier, um, there's a significant expansion uh, in terms of um, that uh, the incidence of that condition, it's really growing very rapidly. Um, and in ovarian cancer, there are a few alternatives. In this particular cohort of patients, we had an average um, uh, pretreatment of those of six prior lines of therapy, so six different therapies, an average of about 30 cycles. Um, and we saw a 100% um, disease control rate there. 100% uh, of those patients were... Um, uh, platinum resistant, and they had they had exhausted uh, all of the available options for treatments. Despite that heavy pretreatment and the resistant cancer, we saw a disease control rate of 100%, and a, what's, what's called an objective response rate of 29%. This compares very favourably with other therapies in this category of patients of between 9 and 16%. So significantly better. Um, um, efficacy in comparison to those published data, durable responses of up to 36 weeks, and a number of other benefits, including very good, uh, very good tolerability. Uh, if you could please <clears throat> advance to the next slide. So this just summarizes the um, uh, toxicity improvements. Uh, and this is comparing Depir and Otecan, our product, to Camptosar, the marketed product. Um, and you can see there that um, uh, just in terms of diarrhea, severe diarrhea, which is a life-threatening side effect of the original form of this product, occurs in 20 to 40 percent of patients, not a single case in our 100 patients. We also saw no cases of cholinergic syndrome. So these two side effects are actually very problematic side effects, uh, and we saw so we saw significant reductions in those side effects which translated to significant improvements for patients. And as I said, we had very positive feedback. Next slide, please. Very briefly, um, another of our products, Depcarbazitaxel, this is a prostate cancer um, treatment typically. Jevtana is the marketed product. Our version on the right-hand side there, which has a number of benefits which are out outlined on these slides. Um, this is um, been trialed in prostate cancer patients primarily. So if you go to the next slide, again, a very heavily pretreated cohort of patients, an average of four other therapies, more than 70 months or cycles of treatment, and 95% of the patients uh, in this part of our study had had prior therapy with closely related products or exactly the same product, the Jebtana product. 
Um, we, we saw improvements in terms of uh, in comparison of efficacy, PSA reduction significantly better than Jevtana, um, and a number of other measures, uh, about a 30% improvement in terms of progression-free survival. And again, as we saw with Depir and Otican, significant improvements uh, in terms of side effect profile. You can see that on the right-hand side of this slide. So overall, side effects um, in grade three, four, which are the more severe ones, 7.5% for our product, compared to 40 to 55% for the marketed product. And in particular, you can see some bone marrow toxicity uh, toxicity comparative data there on the right hand side of that slide. Uh, so that is a um, significant improvement in those two. There, we have another product, next slide please. We have another product, um, Deptocetaxel, which I'm not going to go into. We haven't released um, data on that one yet, although we will be releasing data on that soon. Um, but we also, so that there, there, those three products are all uh, at uh, the completion of phase two trials. So next slide, please. Beyond these uh, standard chemotherapeutics, um, using Adendroma, as I mentioned, you can also use it for a variety of other types of treatment modalities, including a new class of um, uh, therapy called a radiotheranostic, which is where you attach a radioisotope um, to, this, um, to this Dendroma scaffold. And if you go to the next slide, um, we've recently presented some really exciting data uh, of a radio diagnostic product, Depher2 zirconium, uh, which is a, uh, a, a targeted therapy which will allow better imaging and better staging and better monitoring of various kinds of um, cancer, in particular kinds of breast cancer and gastric cancer. Um, so some very interesting data that was recently released um, on that product. Um, and there is also a, a paired therapeutic. Next slide, please. Um, in addition to these, um, these products in oncology that I've referred to um, in the previous slides, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we also have a number of marketed products. The Viralese antiviral nasal spray, which is a broad spectrum antiviral nasal spray, um, which is active in a whole range of viruses, influenza, respiratory syncytial virus, the COVID virus and cold viruses um, engage currently in a, a trial in the UK, which will be completing um, shortly. And the Vibigel BV product, which is a novel uh, non-antibiotic therapy for a widely, uh, for a very common condition called bacterial vaginosis. Um, uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Very briefly, the Viralese product, um, which can be used in addition to vaccines for those respiratory infections I mentioned earlier. Um, the product is sprayed into the nose and basically what happens, you can see the little diagram on the right-hand side, it coats the nasal mucosa. If you inhale a virus, it, it traps that virus and renders that virus incapable of binding to your nasal mucosal cells, so incapable of infecting you. So this product, as I mentioned, is uh, uh, already, um, uh, it's in clinical, it was, there's a clinical trial which is completing recruitment in the UK. It is already registered in more than 30 countries um, and we have, a, and we are continuing to roll that out uh, commercially. So just in concluding the presentation, if you could move to the next slide, please. Um, key, uh, value drivers and outlook. We have these three clinical stage assets. We have rec completed recruitment um, across the majority of those programs. We will be progressively releasing and presenting data. We're presenting three posters at an international oncology conference uh, in October, and there'll be further announcements in relation to that. We have a number of partnered programs, really interesting and exciting programs that have the ability to yield significant downstream revenues for the product, uh, for, for the company, I should say, and uh, progress and further news in relation to those and potential new partnerships. Um, we have a, a growing portfolio of DEP programs, including radiotheranostics products, 
and we have the marketed products there, um, which are outlined on the right-hand side. Expansion uh, of the commercialization for the Viralease product, further registrations for the Viralease product. Um, I expect to uh, announce the completed completion of recruitment very soon, uh, and we'll have results coming out of that clinical trial as well, which will feed into um, our marketing activities and uh, regulatory activities in other markets. Uh, Viva Gel BV, um, we have recently taken back rights for that product with a significant cash settlement, and we, we are in negotiations with partners for further distribution arrangements. So I expect that we'll make some further announcements in relation to um, both regulatory and commercial activities for that product. So thank you very much for your attention. Dr. Fairley, thank you very much for that. Uh, we do have um, we do have a few questions that have come in. Uh, one, I, you, you touched on this in, during the presentation and did mention that the results weren't out and they will be out at some point. The question relates to DEP docetaxel, and the question is, can you give us a little bit more of a guide as to when the top line results might be out uh, for docetaxel in, in particular? Um, do you, can you give us a bit more of a sense of when that's likely to happen? Yeah, so the docetaxel uh, study has completed recruitment and we expect that the results will be out, um, yeah, will probably be out in the coming weeks. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, uh, so a couple more questions there as well. Um, uh, and this one is around um, your, your, your partnerships. Now, Star Pharma uh, has partnerships with, you know, uh, some of the largest pharma companies like like Merck and and Genentech, et cetera. Um, how do can you elaborate a little bit on how on how those partnerships fit into Star Pharma's strategy and uh, and how they you know contribute to generating returns for shareholders at the end of the day? Of course. <clears throat> well, these are an important category in terms of um, uh, generation of potential revenues because if you think about a platform technology, um, to maximise returns to shareholders, you want to have a number of programs where you're generating uh, revenues in parallel. The partnerships are funded by our partners and they allow us to generate um, milestones and royalties <coughs> or other downstream, <coughs> excuse me, downstream payments um, from products that we would not be able to access ourselves because they are proprietary products. And so there's a very significant uh, leverage component of those partnered programs. Um, each one of them uh, incorporates uh, downstream returns. So um, as the product progresses through its development, um, through its development activities, we receive milestones uh, and, you know, which are in the sort of millions of dollars. And then as the product goes into the market, we would also receive either royalties or other um, downstream payments as that product is sold. So essentially, we are um, leveraging beyond what we could develop ourselves. And we are essentially having these fully funded programs where we have a free carried interest on multiple um, downstream, revenue, uh, downstream revenues. Great. Thank you. That's very clear. Um, a couple more questions uh, remaining. Uh, one is with regards to uh, viralese uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the question relates to, uh, and, and again, you, you've gone through this in the Prezo, but um, the, you know, viralese is currently being trialled in COVID-19 in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate a little bit on that? And, and can you tell us about, about the trial itself um, and give us maybe a sense for when you expect it to be completed, when we can expect to see some results, uh, you know, a little bit of colour around that. So we, <clears throat> we've, <clears throat> excuse me, we have um, that that product or that trial has recruited ahead of schedule uh, and we I expect that we will be announcing completion of recruitment very soon. Um, uh, there has been a bit of a wave of COVID in the UK in the recent past and that's contributed uh, to that recruitment rate, which is great. Um, and I expect that after the completion of recruitment, uh, well, obviously, when we announce the completion of recruitment, we will give guidance at that stage for the timing of the release of results. Um, but I would expect that it would be, um, you know, it would be, you know, probably within a month or two of the completion of recruitment. Right. Thank you. And one more question for you. This one's 
uh, uh, more sort of financials related, um, and it's around the balance sheet. Uh, you you look to be you know considerably well funded at this point. Uh, I I you know the question is, are you comfortable that you know from a balance sheet perspective, you you know you have all the uh, you know all the uh, the the uh, the strength and the and the uh, and the cash flow and the uh, and the balance sheet required to get done what you what you have planned. Absolutely, yeah. We do, as you say, have a strong balance sheet. Um, you know, many companies in our sector and in these markets um, do not. But you know, we closed the, the 30 June. Um, we closed the year with 35 million. Um, since that time, we have received another 6.6 um, million Aussie from the settlement of a Mundi Farmer arrangement, uh, which we had in place for the VVGL BV product. So, yes, we're feeling com very comfortable uh, with the strength of our balance sheet, uh, and um, and we are well funded. Dr. Fairley, thank you for your time today. Um, that was great and, and, and have a great weekend. Thank you very much. You too.